Hey fellas, it's been a uh, little bit since my last video. Got back from Florida a couple weeks ago on vacation, so I haven't done much modeling. Uh, I did finish up a a uh, 132nd Kingfisher that I uh, had been working on prior to vacation and got that sent off. And uh, now I am working on the HK Models 132nd scale B17F for a customer. And this is, looks to be an outstanding kit. It is, uh, uh, with that being said, it's huge. It's a, it's, it's a huge kit. Um, probably the biggest one I've worked on since the 148B1 that I, that I built. Um, but unlike the B1, this has a ton of parts. So I'll, I'm going to do a build video uh, on this. Uh, I haven't got anything in paint. I've been working on the uh, the uh, the nose area, the nose, uh, the gunner position, and uh, basically I'm just going to take this in steps because if you if uh, you try to tackle too much at one time with a kit like this, uh, it's going to overwhelm you. You know, and when I first opened up the kit and started looking at all the parts and all the aftermarket parts the customer sent me, it it, it can it could get overwhelming really quick. So I'm just breaking it down, um, kind of like I would with with any other kit, but but you really have to to break it down more so with this one, and and I'm not going to be working on different sub assemblies at the same time, like I normally do, uh, because this one's so big and there's so many parts. I'm just going to work on one section at a time, get that done, get it painted, then go to the next. Uh, lots of um, with, with a lot of other kits, I'll work on one sub-assembly and another sub-assembly and then I'll paint all at one time but with this one I'm just gonna go and and, uh, and do each sub-assembly um, get it done and then move on to the next so what I kinda wanted to show and I don't always do this um, but with this kit I think it's necessary um, just to start off with is show you how I'm, I'm gonna organize this kit because uh, you know, a lot of times if you if you don't label the sprues, you know you spend half your time hunting for a part um, because the uh, the identification on the sprue on the sprue gates is um, is really small. So what I've done, let me show you what I've done and how I'm organizing this is I've got all the uh, sprue gates labeled so I can see them. And I kind of try to keep them in, in somewhat alphabetical order. But as you can see, there are a ton of parts. So I've labeled all the sprues so that way when I'm sitting there and, and I need to need to find uh, sprue K, it's right here. It's easy to find. I'm not spending an hour looking for, for the uh, sorting through the, the uh, sprue gates. Now with the clear parts, um, there are, I think, three, three sprue gates. Um, I'm not labeling those. I should know what those are. Um, I've got all of the aftermarket parts separated. Um, I've got a bunch of different uh, Edward sets and a uh, the Mark I design uh, detail set. I've got those separated with the instructions. So I go through um, when I'm putting the sub-assemblies together and figuring out which, which aftermarket parts I'm going to use for that particular sub uh, sub assembly and so I can I can find them really quickly uh, He sent me a ton of of, of parts with this um, got some really nice looking Resin wheels, I mean those are outstanding um, And pretty much all the photo etch you can get for it. I, I think uh, I get uh, my reference materials laid out here um, I've been searching the interwebs and watching videos on this kit. Um, there are a few out there. Uh, one guy in particular, Inclusive Model Designs, is he's got some YouTube videos on a couple different B-17s. Doesn't look like he's finished them yet, but uh, you know he's got some good ideas. Uh, the the owner of this kit sent me this book, um, the AVF Club. On building this kit and it's got some really great stuff in there uh, one of the things I'm going to try to tackle is um, using epoxy to make these fabric uh, fabric pieces on the interior 
and I've never really done that before. I mean, I've used two-part epoxy uh, putty, but uh, this is going to be a challenge, and I, I'm I'm going to one of, one of the things when I build kits is is I really like to uh, uh, stretch my abilities. Um, you don't become a better better modeler until you uh, you know you try new things and and do things you've 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 never done before, and and that's one of those deals that I'm going to try to try to tackle. Um, with this kit, uh, it's got wood uh, wood flooring, and I'm going to also try to tackle that not the way that this uh, book shows it this book shows uh using decals and i'm going to do it uh, using some some paint and some uh some acrylic paint some oil paint and i think i can come up with a uh, a good look and since it's going to be in the interior in in the interior it's not going to be you know in your face so if it's um i don't know if it doesn't work out I may just order some some decals, but I, I think I should be able to make it look pretty good. Um, I also ordered this book, the B17 in action. Not the greatest book, but it does have some um, stuff in here. This is the plane that he wants done. Is this knockout dropper? Uh, we're going to alter the camouflage a little bit. Uh, so, but it does have some some different photos. Uh, I think probably the the best thing that I found in this book is just showing how it shows the differences between the different models up close. Um, you know, like here, it, it it just shows you know like on the on the uh, the B seventeen B how the the uh, the tail rudder is 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 different than than uh, how it progressed into the F and the E and the G. But uh, yeah, this is this is a decent reference, not the greatest. I like something with with more color photos, but obviously since this plane was uh, used during World War II, there aren't a whole lot of color photos. Another reference material that I have, <clears throat> I picked this up for like twenty bucks at the bookstore, and it's it shows all the uh, the planes from World War II, and it gives a, a kind of like a a blueprint kind of like a diagram of of all the internal workings and it labels each of the parts so if I, I get stuck on on how something uh, needs to go and in the instructions and the instructions aren't clear I can kind of reference this and and get a get a good look at, at, at how it should be so uh, these are the bigger sprues I haven't labeled these because obviously these are the wings um, and you can see how big this thing is. Hold it up to my hand. I mean, that is going to be a huge plane. Hopefully, there's no issues with the wings snapping on after I uh, after I paint them, kind of like I did with the B25 Mitchell. They just snapped on and off. Hopefully, these do the same. That way, I can ship it um, without having to pay, you know, two hundred dollars to get it shipped. Um, with this is what I've got done so far. As you can see, this is I've spent about a day and a half on these this nose section. And uh, what I do is I've got these little trays that, that uh, my daughter bought me, food trays, and they're really good for organizing. I got another one over there. Um, when I when I go to paint these, what I do is I separate them out based on color. Okay, now I'm going to paint this an in interior green, these pieces here in interior green. Then I'll mask off and do the uh, the flooring. And as you can see here, what I've done, the light catches it just right. In order to replicate the uh, the wooden planks base or the uh, the wooden flooring based on the references, I just scribed down the center line to represent uh, two different pieces of wood, and then I made some uh, some rivet holes. Or like where the uh, where they would screw into the frame so I'll, I'll paint uh, this edge here and this edge here the interior green color and then I'll go back over and mask those off and then uh, spray deck tan and use some oil paint and some uh, different tones of brown to get the uh, the wood look effect uh, these are all going to be wood colored the ammunition boxes uh, I got some aluminum. This is going to be an aluminum finish. In fact, I think I'll probably put this over here in the aluminum finish as well. 
And then these are all my black pieces. I've got my photo etch on here. I've um, sanded off where the, uh, the colored photo etch is gonna go. So I can put that on when I'm done. Um, let's see. And the, uh, the paint, what I do with my research, and color is always a big thing. Uh, you know, you, you get on forums and ask what a certain color is going to be, and 10 different people will tell you 10 different colors. But what of, but uh, kind of the research that I found and is, is the, uh, the color for the interior of most of the interior, the, the B17, is this FS34092. It's like a medium green. And what I do is I, when I empty out a uh, Tamiya bottle, I always wash them out, clean them out, and I keep them. So when I need a, a custom color, I can just use them. And, and then I'll, I'll label it. So this is a uh, one-to-one -one ratio of XF13 and XF2, and it comes up with this nice interior green color. Um, so I got that going. So that's how I'm organizing this build. Uh, I'm gonna get started on painting. I, I'm gonna do a few videos on this, on this build. I'll do them throughout, throughout the build. Um, if there's something in particular that I think others might benefit from, then then I'll I'll videotape those. But if I videotape every little detail and every 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 part of the build, it's going to extend my build time, um, you know, another week or so. And I really I've got some other builds that I need to get done, so I I, I don't want to be doing that. But there will be more build videos on this. I would consider this part one, um, probably maybe three, four. Who knows? Uh, we'll we'll see see how it goes but I'm gonna get to painting and uh, see you in the next video